Hello there, you're watching the press preview, a first look at what is on the front pages. Uh, with me here in the studio, as you can see, to take a look through mm. these newspapers, uh, we are joined by our Wednesday night regulars, the Daily Mirror's associate editor, Kev McGuire, and the Daily Mail columnist, Sarah Vine. Welcome and great to see Evening. you. So, as ever, to the front pages, let us kick off with. The Daily Mail, which leads with the prisoner who is on the run with the headline, terrorist suspect flees jail strapped under a delivery van. The Daily Telegraph also with Daniel Khalif's face on their front page with the headline, terror suspect escapes jail under a lorry. Front page of the I, mortgage relief on the way, hits the bank chief as Andrew Bailey signals good news for homeowners after a rate, uh, the rates hit 5.25%. The Financial Times also says Bailey's top of the cycle signal cast out on more rate rises to come, sending the pound to a three-month low. The Metro leading with Sarah's death, an incident as her fugitive parents break cover and say they are ready to talk to police. That's the case of Sarah Sharif. The Guardian leads with a story of an undercover police officer who deceived a woman into a 19-year relationship. Front page of the Daily Express, we see the Rolling Stones, who today announced a new album. Their lead, though, the Prime Minister declaring he'll make the UK the best place in the world to do business. It's a bit hot, according to the front page of The Star, as the UK melts under 32 degrees heat, although enjoy it while you can, they say. Here, here. Uh, a reminder, by scanning the QR code you'll see on screen during the programme, you can check out the front pages of tomorrow's newspapers while you watch us. So let us discuss more. Joined by Kevin and Sarah. Um, Kevin, you kick off. Daily Mail, if you don't mind. Um, this terrorist suspect, under a van, it appears, a food delivery van, how did he get access to a vehicle at Wandsworth Jail? Yeah, uh, dressed as a chef, according to the, uh, to the, the mail. So how did he get uh, that? Presumably prison kitchens. But to strap yourself under a van and be driven out, I and mean, it's something from a film, yeah, I mean, it like is. A, a prisoner of war uh, film. It, it is. I don't want to. The Great Escape. Yeah, in some way, I don't want to glamorise anyway somebody who's accused uh, of, of terrorist offences. But what a remarkable escape! And it's so rare too, because very few people do get out of prisons now. Mm. Uh, it used to be quite commonplace. Remember when I was a young reporter, it seemed to be happening all the time. Mm. But now there's a huge manhunt for this person who. Uh, this man, the former soldier, who the, the males say was uh, suspected of um, spying for Iran. So, uh, terrorism offences accused of and breaching the Official Secrets Act. But oh. where is he? He's said he's uh, links a... to the Kingston area, where I used to live yeah. in south-west London. But, uh... It's an old-fashioned, cracking old-fashioned yeah. story. Out of yeah. a Victorian jail. Out of a Victorian yeah. jail, exactly. So, it's, 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 it's quite exciting. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think it's quite exciting. Really, it's not. It's not. Exciting. No, it's <laughs> not. But it, but it, it, can't, it it's be, be dressed as a chef. It's just, I mean, you know. Yeah, it's a kind of a story that's not a political story. It's an actual uh, story, story. Uh, it, uh, it, you know, which will unfold. Yeah, you know, it, there will be a manhunt. He will be found. Yeah, 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 Khalif is clearly resourceful, which would mm. make it harder for the police, I suspect, yeah. to find him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, the reason it's not is because of the heightened security at ports and airports, delayed passengers, you know, the warnings not to approach him, you know, security stepped up. You know, there is a, there is a sort of desperation to find this person. Yeah. And as you say, what are his skills at subterfuge and, uh, and hiding himself? Well, he's trained by the army, so presumably quite good. And, well, I mean, anyone who can strap themselves to the bottom of a van is going to be pretty... Yeah. yeah, dangerous, I would say. Well, he, he needs an accomplice or a mate with a yeah. back room. Yeah. And that mate or accomplice isn't known to the police. And then you can lie low for, for weeks or months and then try and get out with a dodgy passport, I imagine. Well, there's ports on high alert. Police believe yeah. the ex-soldier may be trying to flee the country. Well, I guess you would. Um, Alex Chalk, the Justice Secretary, is already in conversation with the prison governor. Lots of questions for them. Yeah. And again, local Labour leaders are talking about understaffing at Wandsworth Jail. That goes back years, you see, yeah. um, uh, talking about, you know, how overcrowded yeah. uh, Wandsworth is amidst understaffing and budget cuts as well. Mm -hmm. all, all that is true. I mean, it's an incredibly old prison. Yeah. I've only seen it from the outside, I'm glad to say. I've never been inside. But the, there was a government recruitment drive recently which had admitted yeah. that the number of prison officers, the, the shortage, was a, was a big problem. But this, but this has been security. a problem for a long time, as actually. This has been a problem for a number of years. Yeah, oh, yeah. Our prisons are very old, very understaffed, very poorly... I mean, they were, most of them are just on their last legs. I mean, they, 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 there hasn't been a... It's, it's, it's very difficult for any government to sort of 
to sort of say, right, we're going to spend a lot of money building new prisons because everyone says, well, why would we do that? You know, it's not it's not a popular thing. So you can get so, staffing right. So, you? Well, you can get staffing right, but the, but the thing is, it's it's very difficult to in a sort of modern world to to police prisoners in Victorian buildings, you know, where they have all sorts of access yeah. to drones, taking things in, mobile... F I mean, they're, they're not... You know, criminals tend to be quite good it's... at this kind of thing, and, and it's yeah. very hard for, I think... It's but incredibly... I still don't understand how you get access to an area well, which has vehicles... He was working in, in the kitchens, uh, and, and also a lot of these prisons tend to... Tend to to, to, I mean, this guy was probably quite clever. You know, he could have very easily inveigled himself and made it made it seem like he was the sort of person who could be trusted a little. But that does happen in prisons, unfortunately. And you know, it only takes a clever person to to, to sort of worm their way into the into the good books, and they get put on a nice detail, and yeah, yeah. You know, off you go. And yeah. and and I and you know, I I do think I mean, prisons are overcrowded. There are too many people in them. We send too many people to prison. Actually, genuinely, we send lots of people to prison who really don't need to be in prison, who have, you know, who have done. And are made worse by it as well. You know, it's ex exactly. I mean, prison expensive and it makes it know, worse. It makes it worse, and, yeah. and the conditions are terrible, and the and the yeah. and the staff are demoralised, and often, you know, no, nobody wants to do these jobs because they're poorly paid not appreciated, and they get abused all the time. Incre incredibly tough, because you're yeah. dealing with people who don't yeah. want to be there. They, exactly. they, they had to work through COVID. You know, they're, ki they're key workers, yeah. but they, they are not well-paid yeah. prison, prison officers. They're banned from striking, uh, which just shows you they have few employment rights. Yeah. Cause you're, it's just a basic right. You should be able to go on strike. And you can, you can see why people don't want to become prison officers. And I've, you know, I've met quite a few in my time. And, mm. you know, I mean, I've been around quite a few they're prisons. They're good people. And they, are, they uh -huh. are trying. They do really try hard to do their jobs, but they're very uh, yeah. poorly looked after, I think, on the whole. OK, there's the Times as well. Terror suspect escapes prison. Questions over lower security jail and vehicle checks. Uh, you could say that. There are lots of questions for that governor uh, and the staff there to answer on this one. Yep. And the manhunt obviously continues, does it not? Um, let's move on, shall we, to the Metro front page, I think. Um, the fact that the death of Sara Sharif was an incident. So this was a video so sent weird. to uh, one of our correspondents and the BBC overnight, this video by the stepmother with her father... Uh, alongside being silent, um, explaining, you know, why they why they're in hiding effectively. It's just so weird. It's just so weird because it's, it, you know you watch the video and it's almost as though she's she's saying, "Poor little me, I'm having an awful time." Let's have a listen yeah. to the video then, shall we? Firstly, I would like to talk about Sarah. Sarah's death was an incident. Our family in Pakistan are severely affected by all that is going on. All the media have been given wrong have been giving wrong statements and making up lies. Imran did not give a statement that Sarah fell down the stairs and broke her neck. Sarah. Yeah, I mean if your child falls down the stairs and breaks its neck, you don't put all the other children on an airplane and go to Pakistan. Well they were saying that's not what actually that's happened, not what but it was an happened. incident. Okay. So they said there was an incident. Right. Okay. Um, you so know. why aren't they I don't understand but I still don't understand why you wouldn't call the police or the ambulance. I mean, why would you just leave the... I don't... It's odd. Very odd. A bit, right. I mean, very charitable. People deal with grief in different ways. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Right. But, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know, jump on a plane, come back, speak to the police. Uh, that's this is that's it. And if you're not doing that, yeah... And... You're not going to leave your well, child... No. Dead ..in a house on its own, no. are you? Um, no. I'm sorry, the... <laughs> Instead of recording that video, self-justification, yeah. and you're the victim, there is a dead kid. A ten Your old. dead yeah. kid. Mm. It's, yeah. it's, it just seems very odd. I, the whole yeah. thing is just very peculiar. And to mm. release a video sort of trying to get everyone to feel sorry for you is a very strange and probably not terribly wise thing to do, I don't think. Well, I, I think it'll backfire. Mm. Mm. OK, well, we'll see what happens. Willing to cooperate. You know, the UK authorities mm. probably, presumably trying to work out how that would happen yeah, if just, they are in hiding. Just get a flight. Just get a flight back and uh, mm. speak to the police. Mm. OK. Um, let's move on to Rack, shall we? Um, a big round of comments about it, obviously, today. The cowboy builder's accusation against Rishi Sunak. One wonders if it sticks. The list is out of the schools and uh, secure blasting the Tories for a botched job. Well, what's interesting here is that's page four of the yeah. Metro. Uh, I think there's one paragraph 
paragraph on the front page of the FT. Yeah. Other papers been leading on it. It's it's gone inside. There's mm. probably some relief for Gillian Keegan after the bashing she's had for several days, including uh, in, including Rishi Sunak. Mm. The, the row hasn't gone away, but it's it's kind of died down. I think it's inflicted a lot of damage on the government. Yeah, I mean the problem is it's cumulative, isn't it? If the government was having a really brilliant month and it was all going really well it wouldn't really it would you know they'd have yeah. been able to deal with this in a much more effective way it's just it just comes it's one thing after another at the moment for the government and it's you know and and, and the theme is under investment uh infrastructure crumbling things not working you know we had the we had the shutdown of the air traffic control last week it's just a, can somebody just you know i mean i don't what i don't understand about this story is that if you locked down the schools as they did, why didn't you? Why didn't someone say at some point, okay, well the schools are closed, so this would be a good time to maybe think about doing something about this awful rack problem that we've got? Because they knew about it in 2018, and I mean I know that some schools didn't return the questionnaires and all of that kind of stuff, but still that's quite a long time ago. And there were a lot of kids still in school, though, weren't there? Because well, there, but the they were very key, key worker kids were. Yeah. They still needed extra help work. Yeah, but I mean these they are let lot... younger ones back earlier. But you know, you would have, you could have, point, though, you yeah. could have, you could have at that point because construction wasn't shut down. So you could have tried to to make some sort of serious inroads into it. Mm. Um, but then, of course, we've had five education ministers, haven't we? Or was it six? I don't know. I don't know. Quite a lot. And probably another one you know, tomorrow. This uh, rate, but uh, quite yeah. a lot. It's it's been a sort of bit of a, a bit of a kind of carousel. And I and I and you know, education is such a cornerstone of yeah. oh yeah of government and a and a functional government. You know, was it Tony Blair who said education, it, education, education? I mean, mm. that really hasn't changed. And I, and 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 also people really feel it. Voters really feel it because you know it doesn't. In a way, it doesn't really matter whose fault it is and who made a mistake and whether anybody was sitting on their "Quote unquote backside," as Gillian Keegan said, put it. Um, you know, yeah. the fact is, is that children won't have gone to school this week, and parents will have had to scramble for childcare, and it's just after after, quickly, after 13 it? years, mm. a government can't blame anybody else. It's got it's got yeah. to take responsibility. Yeah. It'll get responsibility, mm. but of course, it, it's going to cost to do it. And I mean, investment budgets were cut, so it's a partly a legacy of that. Also, as time goes on. This okay. concrete gets further and further from its sell by date. Yeah, well, the, the first warning, I think, was in 1996, wasn't no. it? Or at least the mid 90s. Mm. Gillian Keegan mm. said 94, uh, I know, earlier this week. Mm. Anyway, lots more still to come, including the king working harder than his mother in first year, his first year on the, watch in the press preview. With me once again, Kevin Maguire and Sarah Vine. Welcome back to both of you. Mm. Um, so, Horizon, uh, the uh, EU's Horizon Research Club, to which the UK looks like might be rejoining. Yeah, and picking a bit of. Uh... Brexit, a very damaging bit of uh, Brexit, uh, because it's a huge programme. It's 85 billion, although the FT have it as 95 billion euros rather than, mm -hmm. rather than pounds. But Britain did incredibly well from it, because we have oh. a fantastic research sector that has oh. been frozen out to some extent. It was agreed in 2020 we'd go back in. We got it held up until there was an agreement on the Northern Ireland framework, uh, you know, the Windsor uh, framework. Uh, looks like it's finally done. We'll have to pay an entry fee and subscriptions and there's some back money that will have to go in. The figures aren't there, but it's good for good for Britain I mean, and I the rest of Europe that will be good, back in it. But I think it's part of, a, of, of the government's new push, which is Brexit is going to work and we are going to make it work. Because um, simultaneously, uh, Rishi Sunak's also done a piece for The Express mm -hmm. talking mm -hmm. about, you know... Uh, Business deals, but he's going to India tomorrow, isn't he? So I think that's. I'm, I'm starting to see emerging, yeah. emerging a little bit of a sort of kind of electoral theme because, of course, you know, the, the, one of the reasons mm. the Tories won such a big majority was because of the kind of uh, red wall and, and they're very Brexity. And so. Or were. Well, I don't know, maybe they. Yeah. Who knows? You're not very Brexity. No, but you know. to make Brexit but work, you, you have to I mean? undo Brexit. But, so, but this idea. The, uh, this, uh, <laughs> the idea. The, the idea <laughs> I know, that, I know. The idea but, that yeah. the government can reap the benefits of Brexit and that, you know, uh, reset. He's calling this uh, this this thing. You know, we can we can we can join hands when we need to, and not when we don't. And I think this is quite a good theme for the Tories politically. Okay, um, quickly, the King has worked for more days in his first year as monarch than his mother did. Not as many I read 
uh, in the paper last night, which I think did this story, sorry, the Metro, uh, as George the Sixth, who worked 183 days in a year. Mm. Um, you like this one very quickly, Sarah. Well, it's the first, it's the year, well, the, 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 de the anniversary of the Queen's death is on Friday, so I think that this is a little bit of, of sp palace spin, just reminding us all that, you know, the Carolean age is upon us. And, uh, and that he's jolly hard-working. Worked? Worked? What's he done? Has he been driving long-distance lorries or been on a building <laughs> site, <laughs> on a production line if, in, a if, if you in a factory? If you continue in this vein, we won't get to the Rolling Stones. Sorry, he's anyway, not doing that to himself and <laughs> sipped a few drinks. I'm That's what he's done. Worked. Uh, Rolling Stones, <laughs> uh, it's taken 18 years for them to release a new album. Yeah. They combined ages 235 <laughs> yeah. and what fun they had today. Yes, and, and I like the fact that their video still has the sort of obligatory semi-clad sort of 23-year-old lovely yeah. sprawled all over a, a... I mean, they are incorrigible. It's brilliant. Like okay. Still rock and roll, still dangerous, as one yeah. put it yeah. today. Yeah. Gavin Maguire, Sarah Vine, yeah. thank, thank you. you.